excited about this one because this is a kind of a continuation from our last meetup. And if you didn't catch the last meetup live and in person, uh, you can definitely check it out. We've got a link uh, that's available for everyone. And then all the code that we put together for the actual meetups is also available in that same GitHub repository. Uh, just a little housekeeping. Uh, if you guys have any questions, throw it into the chat. And uh, we try to keep it you know, very interactive. So if there's any questions or any doubts or anything that comes up, um, you know, just go ahead and throw it out there. And then of course, video is optional. We don't have to share your video, but um, one of these days where we'll have uh, many live sessions and uh, and some of our next sessions, we're looking at uh, giving away some swag and and things like that. So uh, we've been uh, gaining a lot of ground in our, in our meetup community. And so we're super excited uh, to keep going and bringing you guys these, these awesome, uh, events and kind of these awesome uh, knowledge sessions. If you are on Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, join our groups over there under Data Lakehouse. And uh, we'll talk about about Data Lakehouse and what that is towards the end of the session, but you can always just go check it out yourself, but definitely follow us on social media so you're up to date on the latest and greatest. The agenda for this discussion is pretty straightforward. So we're going to be talking about streams and really what it means to have a continuous pipeline in Snowflake, then also walk you guys through a quick demo of streams, talk about some of the core concepts, and then we'll just open it up to discussion and everything like that. I think this is gonna be a fairly quick demo and walkthrough in session today, uh, unless uh, people have lots of different questions and things they wanna throw out there. Uh, but streams is a pretty straightforward concept as we'll talk about, but please do, go ahead and, and um, check out our YouTube channel. We'll send out the link, uh, be very visible uh, to you guys once you get your hands on the, the slide deck and, and maybe even the code. A lot of good ones out there. We're, we're really covering all these key concepts of Snowflake and like a very um, easy to, to absorb uh, type of uh, session. So uh, take a look at the whole YouTube uh, video repository. You might find something out there you really like. Super quick refresher. On Snowflake, we always get at least one person who's brand new to Snowflake. And um, the way we kind of call it out is that it's the, the data cloud. Of course, that's what they their moniker they're throwing out there for themselves. But you know, really, it's four key things, right? So it's the ability to ingest data, uh, govern data, understand the data, uh, access the data uh, from a security perspective, as well as an ease of access and really almost infinitely scale your data uh, in the cloud, especially with their keen ability to separate compute from storage. And if none of that makes sense uh, to you, you can definitely reach out to, to me or, or us, and we can always explain uh, this in great detail or answer your question. So uh, the other bit of, of insight here is, you know, it really solves the problem of giving users, number one, the ability just to get into the cloud in a very uh, secure, straightforward manner. Uh, but it also allows for all these other different types of um, uh, capabilities that you might have many different separate tools uh, currently in use uh, in your architecture to, to achieve uh, ultimate outcomes and goals and uh, that, you might, that you guys might have for internal or external customers, ultimately getting us to the far right side of the equation, which is the ability to consume data that could be for machine learning and AI operational reporting, ad hoc analytics, you know, your data analyst, that type of thing. So there's pretty much something for everybody who is doing something with data, trying to get that to information. Uh, got a typo here, that should really be streams, uh, power and purpose, but that's okay. So what is a stream? Uh, stream and Snowflake is really, again, part of that continuous data pipeline framework that uh, Snowflake is continuing to build off of. They've introduced Snowpark recently. We could talk about that. I love this definition of stream as it relates to Snowflake streams. I like the computing definition you can see down here where it really talks about a continuous flow of data or instructions. And I think that is really what we're after here with streams and Snowflake. It's the ability to kind of turn on this idea of change tracking. Some people call it change data capture. This means different things to different people and definitely in different technologies. But I think the, the general overall theme is to understand what data is coming through the pipeline and do that in a repeatable, predictable way 
um, such as what what records are changed? Are they inserts, updates, deletes? And so we'll talk a little bit about that. It really is part of that framework for Snowflake to move data along inside of Snowflake, not really requiring a separate set of tools uh, once you get it into Snowflake. Uh, and then of course, it, it extends that flow from landing your data. So you've probably heard of snow pipes. Uh, if you're familiar with Kafka, there's a Kafka connector, uh, Google Cloud, uh, Azure Cloud Storage, all these landing into, um, uh, we're getting pulled into Snowflake. And then at that point, you can do a lot of different things with that data once it's landed into a stage or an area where uh, Snowflake can, can read that data uh, or those data sets. And so streams can kind of be that continuation of your pipeline once you're into, you have your data in Snowflake. And then lastly, again, this is probably subjective, uh, calling it a CDC tool or a change tracking tool. Most people see that as uh, something that happens at the source system. So you might be familiar with SQL Server and their change tracking. You might be familiar with like the op log concepts and uh, logical replication, these types of things that uh, if you're you know, more of like a DBA type person. Uh, but once you get to Snowflake, which is you know, technically a warehousing system, uh, they're offering up a different type of change tracking because you could be getting the data from many different types of systems. And so that's your, you know, your unstructured, semi-structured, you know, non-structured, structured data, right? How do you handle that? You know, if, if that system didn't have a CDC or change tracking. So you could kind of consider that streams as the ability to do CDC or change tracking on that type of data. Just to do a, a quick check, make sure uh, everybody can see my slides as I'm moving through them. Is that correct? Yeah? Yes, we, good? we okay. are good. Thank you for the verbal. All right, so a couple things we love to throw out there. And these are kind of like, the, you can almost think of these like some questions we get from people all the time when we're implementing streams or working with streams. And uh, so a lot of times these stream use cases, like I mentioned, are involved that an unstructured data concept you're getting IOT data, or you're pulling in data from, you know, video data, well, there's no change tracking, you know, typically on what changed in the video or the video metadata, right, come any data coming from YouTube or something like that. So when you're loading that metadata or that IOT data into Snowflake, well, maybe you want to know what changed, right, and, and track that. That's a high level example. Um, so a lot of times streams will help enable things like real time views. So I might be getting um, 50,000 records per minute into a system landing into my cloud storage bucket. And this is this is real world scenario, right? If you're doing IoT or if then um, if this then that um, types of situations, or you just have a you know global operational um, or company, right? It's doing a lot of operations and you're you're funneling data as fast as you can through the system and people want to see that data. Um, you know, changed and aggregated at five, 15 minute, you know, one hour increments. So one way to do that, again, is to give them that real time view perspective by uh, creating like a, a, a sub view or a separate view that's going to provide that analytical view on top of operational data and provide them near real time. So with uh, a stream, you can kind of separate out your data, right? So take, take the stream to go one path or another path. So say, hey, all the data that's being inserted, let me show that in my real-time view versus the data that's being updated or deleted, things like that. Um, because streams, in theory, involves the use of tasks, it doesn't have to, but um, when you get to more of an automated process, you're gonna pull in, in tasks. And guess what? We have an awesome video on Snowflake tasks from our last meetup session. So you can always check that out on YouTube, learn more about that. But we're going to do one task today. We're going to create one task uh, to pull that data out of the stream uh, this afternoon. And then, of course, uh, I mentioned, you know, you can transform data incrementally, kind of similar to like the real-time view feed. And then I mentioned this also as well. It really is kind of like the secondary, if not the primary, change tracking uh, system that you could use as you're doing all your work in Snowflake. All right. So, so I, I guess a, a quick question for the folks uh, who might be on the call. I'm curious, and you can just throw it in the chat window, how many people are using streams today uh, with Snowflake? So if you, you can throw it in the chat window, you know, plus one, 
Okay, cool. Very cool. So hopefully you guys have uh, some good points to add as we're going through this. And we'll get to actually looking at st a stream example. So uh, again, what are we gonna do with streams in this meetup? All right, so pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Uh, talk about the ingestion methods, which I kind of went over, right? We talked about like loading structured, unstructured data, uh, semi-structured into your S3 bucket. And you know, I'm saying S3 is a general uh, term. It could be Ali, Alibaba or Dre for the most part. It could be AWS, it could be Wasabi. Um, uh, there's a couple other source buckets out there. In theory, you can use all those. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, retrieval and emptying of a stream, frequency of a stream task. And then, yeah, you know, there's just so many other things to talk about, right? So there's, you could use uh, of like time travel uh, against a stream. So you could put a stream on a table that's already existed. And this is super cool, right? Like you could almost do like a replay. So let's say, for example, you had a custom table that you populating into Slate for the last 90 days, right? And you want to now create a stream on that table going forward to pull out the records and load a different flow of transformation. But you want to kind of look at the history of the data that's been flowing in, like what's been inserted, what's been updated. So in theory, you could tack on a stream to an existing table and then time travel it um, with the respective attributes for, for the time um, lapse. And then you can actually get all the streaming information you would, uh, just like you would for new records for those little records because it's using uh, Snowflake time travel. So that's a, that's a good one to keep in your back pocket. And then you can put streams on both internal and external tables, kind of handy. Okay, talked about the steps we're just we're going to go through right now, which is we're going to create a staging table, a target table in this case dimension, create a stream, and then we're going to create a task to pull the data out of the stream. Ooh, one last thing. So we talked about this last time in in our tasks, Snowflake task, and oh. Getting that my voice is breaking. Everybody hear me okay? I, your I your mic's my... a little bit strange. It's kind of like Ooh. scratchy ish. Ooh, that's um. I can switch to direct feed on the on the laptop if if that doesn't work. Uh, is it still pretty bad? Somebody give me some odds. Is it still sounds bad? fine to me? Okay. If it gets painful, <laughs> let me know, and then I will switch microphones. Okay, so anyone can jump in. Tell me if it's getting painful. Oh, it's getting weird again. Okay, let me let me let me see if I can quickly switch and go from there. So let me um, pause and then let me see if it's possible to just drop and switch audio. Stand by. Okay, how about now? Is that any better? I don't hear anyone. Can you sounds, hear me? sounds good to me. Okay. Okay, super. Thanks. All right. Uh, if you guys can hear me okay, then I will continue on uh, with the mission. So I was talking about cron scheduling. So cron scheduling, just like you have in Unix or Linux, you can actually use that for your Snowflake tasks. Really cool. And basically, you know, what does that mean? It means you can basically run on any frequency down to a minute, it doesn't go below one minute. You could run store procedures, you could run, you know, standard SQL, um, you could run really any of the type of options you have inside of Snowflake, at least from a querying or an update or an insert delete perspective, right? So that's really cool. So what are we gonna what are we gonna do? What's it what's this look like uh, for working with the stream? We don't have like a perfectly animated video or animated slide here. We'll get to that probably eventually. So you could have any type of extract and load uh, system like data lakehouse.io. You could have a Kafka connector, you could land data into an S3 bucket. And so if you pull that either into a stage or a staging table or, or a snowpipe, 
ultimately getting it just into a table. Let's just call it a staging table. And once you're in that staging table, you're basically going to set up a stream uh, on that staging table, on that, that table that you're, you're trying to monitor for changes. And then you can set up a task um, that will technically look at that stream, compare it potentially to the, to the stream and to the target that you're, you're looking to load those deltas into on whatever frequency you set in your task. And of course, you could have subtasks that are kind of running based on this task if, you know, if it succeeded or if it you know, had any, any rows generated or moved. And then that could call things like a store procedure. So it's this you know, very harmonic dance that you could create, but you could also see where this would go wildly uh, awry. And you've got like this spider web <laughs> that somebody has to maintain and understand what's hooked into what. So really we're gonna be focusing uh, on this very top row. That's what we're actually building right now. But I just wanted to give you uh, a little bit of a you know, data flow diagram to you know, what could really be out there. Um, I think my voice is probably a lot better right now. So we'll just uh, kind of jump over to the stream example. Okay. So before we do the review, let's actually do the example. So can everyone see my Screen okay? We should be looking at uh, Snowflake. Okay. We do not on. see Snowflake. We don't see Snowflake. We see the um, the slide still. Sorry about that. I actually paused. So you guys did not see this. That's correct, right? That's correct. <laughs> okay. I'll have you guys chime in next time uh, when it doesn't appear that what I'm saying is <laughs> relating to the slides. Sorry about that. I didn't catch that. Okay. So this is a diagram I was showing. Um, basically, we have um, an EL, EL or ELT tool like data lakehouse.io, uh, Kafka Stream S3, right? Load in the, in the staging. Uh, the, the task is focused on pulling and comparing the stream or pulling the records out of stream, loading into the target table based on the delta. And of course, I mentioned that spider web of activity, right? So this is that spider web diagram that we were talking about. OK, so let's move on. Hopefully, uh, things are working now. It's OK. Back up. Great. Let's get out of that. All right, now do we see Snowflake? Yes, yes, we do. Excellent. All right, that sounds good. OK, so let's step through this real quick. So we're just going to create like the basics of a stream see if we can pull data out. Um, this is fairly untested code, actually, just mocking this up, just uh, fair warning. So we might have to do some rejigging re as we, we go through this live. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my context, make sure that's good to go. Um, we're going to create a schema to load our data into, so uh, our tables and our objects, rather. Then I'm going to create this table. So it's a super simple table. Um, you know, your naming convention mileage might, might vary here. So we've got a customer table, this basically a staging table, and nothing, nothing too impressive there. So this is like any landing table, either it's coming from a snow pipe or you're populating it directly, which is what we are going to do right now. So I'm just going to load a few records into this table. And you know, a great poll for Snowflake, I don't think I've actually done this before, any of the meetups would be, and I'm curious to what everybody says on the chat. So when you use Snowflake, if you're a user of Snowflake right now, do you highlight each section of code you're going to run in your worksheet when you have like a different code um, and queries going on and click run? Or do you, do you use the semicolon concept where you would, click within the, the statement that you want to run, and then you use the command enter to run the statement and not click the run button. I'm, I'm very curious. So we've got a decent amount of folks on the call. So if you take a second, if you're still uh, listening and my voice isn't breaking up too badly, um, if you could jot in, do you do control enter or do you do run button? Or, highlight and run button, but run button will know what you mean. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So good. I, I think it's it's almost 50 50 right there. Um, yeah. So we, we typically always use the semicolon, um, but you know, it doesn't matter as long as your code works and you're getting the right answers. <laughs> but, uh, but it's always interesting to see what people do. So, all right. So in our customer stage table, we have the uh, records loaded, at least two records. Now I'm going to create what is ultimately like a target table. So I'm calling this one customer dimension. Okay. And I'm giving it uh, just a, an extra column here. So we know it's a completely separate table and it should have a default input of the current timestamp. All right, so we'll, we'll run that. That's created. And then we'll see if we have any records in there. Do we? No records. So we have no records in our target. We have two records in our staging table loaded. Um, I don't really need to switch roles. So now I'm just gonna create, this is a super simple syntax. Um, you know, again, I've, I've got this one line, so it's not really confusing anybody uh, if I indented it. So basically we're gonna create or replace stream and this is the stream name. I, I like to call things what they are. I think, and, and you can always test your limits here on what the length of the string is that you can put for objects. So uh, I will try to be as explicit as possible because when you have 10, 20 of these things, it's helpful when you've declared without cryptic syntax, what the heck that is actually gonna do. So customer stage stream inserts on table, so we're going to put the stream on a table, on our stage table, so that we're, it's basically monitoring it for changes. That's the best way you can think of the stream. And then there's a couple of attributes you can put at the end. So this is just for conversation sake. If we put a pinned only, then it's really looking for insert records because it's like what new appended rows are happening on the staging table, thus inserted rows, and thus also not updated rows. So this, the stream will only give us in, inserted rows. Now we could, if we wanted to, if we didn't have a pinned only, we could use uh, this kind of logic when we start pulling the data. So when we do a select from the stream, we could use where metadata dollar sign action equals insert or update. And I think it's also delete. Um, so, so we could do that as well. But if you don't really care about inserts or deletes, and like this is a stream you want to go one direction and another stream another direction, then you could specify you want inserts only, basically using a pinned only. So that's kind of a, a cool use case. Just to know it exists, I think, is the value here. So now what I'm going to do, and what I should have done, is another check here on the dimension. So let me just bring that down. So let's, I guess, prove out there's nothing in the target table. So just to run this. I do have a question on a pen only. Yeah. yeah. Because the update on the main table, um, updates on the main table are insert and delete, right? So uh, yes. would a pen only capture the updated row with the latest record, with the latest value? So, so that's a, that's a great question. So if you have a pinned only, you could think of it as insert capture only. And so this is where you, you could potentially create two different streams. You could create one stream that is like, here, let me just actually type it out. You could create one that says inserts and you could capture another one that says updates. And then you could remove this or say a pin only false if you wanted to. And in theory, let's just say you take this off. So this, this stream will capture everything, insert updates and deletes, but this one inserts only. So now it's just a question of, because both of these were looking at the stage table. So stage is only where my data is coming in. That's all I'm caring about right now. Where's my data? coming in. Mm -hmm. And now from this, you can determine where you want the data to go, where you want the flow. And append and only is the append on table customer stage. Uh, correct. So up here, and, and you, we'll see an example right now. Uh, so here right now we're inserting records in a stage. Mm -hmm. And so that is the append only table it's looking for. But see, this can look at this, basically, it can look at the same table at the same time. 
So you could have one stream that's looking at the inserts and you could have one stream that's looking at all the updates. It really depends on what you do with the stream. That's the next step. Okay. Because mm -hmm. this statement, all this statement is, is doing is saying, hey, on this table, I'm curious, you know, what records are being added to this table or updated on this table? That's all the statement or these two statements are doing. I see. Yeah. Now we get to the, the next uh, set of statements. So just to show that this dimension is our target. So if I run on the dimension, I still have no records because I haven't, I haven't inserted any records into the dimension. I haven't streamed any records into the dimension table. So now that I have my streams created, um, I'm pretty sure I just created the one. So what do we do? Let's see if we create one. So we can we got another on. question in the chat when you get a minute, Christian. Sure. Oh, that not great. Yes, what, what, do we, what do we have? Let me see. How would you, uh, we define updates only, but ignore inserts? So that's a great question. I have to look at that specifically to see if, if you put a pin only equals false, will that only get the updates? But the other way to do it is uh, using this clause here. You could just say select from stream where metadata action equals update, and that will get you updates only. So you, you could have a, the, the stream itself would still capture like worst case scenario, it would capture inserts, updates, and deletes. And then when you decide to do something with the stream, then you would apply this statement. Because what's, the way you use a stream is you're basically selecting the records out of that stream at a certain interval. And that is giving you those deltas. So we'll, we'll go into an example on that. So let me just confirm and say create replace stream here one time. And then I think I'm in the right place. There we go. Okay, so I didn't create it last time. I was, I was busy talking. All right, so we can run show streams to see what streams are actually working. Um, see what type of data it's bringing, what mode is on, so it pinned only, and, and where it exists. Okay. So now, and, and it's really co-located to the database. Uh, technically, you could co-locate it to a schema name, but uh, right now we're just using schema public. So right now it's co-located to a database. And so now again, if I check, there's still nothing here. So now I'm gonna actually flow records into the stage. So now my, my ELT process is running or my snow pipe is running, whatever it is. And it's gonna load these records here into my staging table. Okay, so now I've inserted two records. And so it's, again, I still should not have anything um, in theory, in my customer dimension table. All right, still nothing there. And so now I've got two options I can do. I could just run a regular query. Like I, I could make a single query that says like, insert into table, select all from the stream, right? Where ID is ID or anything I want. And that can pull the records out of that stream. Okay. Or I could create a task. So if I create a task, the task, I uh, we went over this in our last meetup, you can create a task and then the task is going to use a warehouse. So it's good to specify because the task runs in the background. So you want to specify the compute under which it's going to run because it doesn't run as, as, a, as a your user account. It's going to run in the background. So you have to specify the compute. Then I would schedule it. And I could do two minutes, or I could use, if you guys are familiar with cron, star, 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 star. And that means it'll run every minute, right? So if you're familiar with cron syntax, you could have a field day, but we'll keep it simple, we'll just do two minutes. And so then every two minutes, once this is enabled, because remember when you create a task, it's, it's not running right away. You actually have to resume it, uh, which is kind of counterintuitive. Um, so what it'll do every two minutes is it'll run the syntax here. Now this is a little more complicated syntax. We're using the, uh, the basically the merge into concept from uh, Snowflake, uh, which is super handy actually. And what we're doing is we're, we're trying to match on the IDs. So we're saying, hey, staging table is like a true data warehouse staging table. 
and it's going to have like the business business ID or business key um, that's going to get loaded, for example, into the dimension table. Right. This is just a, a pure high level mockup, but I think you get the point. So using this merge uh, concept, we can look and compare the IDs. So here is the dimension table. That's my target. I want to merge the data into that uh, using a match, pulling the data from the stream and matching on IDs. So if my business key for my staging matches the business key on my target, then run an update statement. If it doesn't match, the business keys don't match for the new data, then uh, do an insert on my target table, okay? So I actually haven't tested this code. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna create this task right now. And the task should create because it doesn't, it doesn't um, necessarily compile the SQL and, and validate that when you create the task, All right? So I'm gonna just do a quick show task because I love that you can just look at whatever objects by object name using the show. And we can see here that we have the task created. And we've got the name when it was created, who created it and owns it. And then there's other details like the state that it's in. And I can see that suspended. So that means it's not running at all. So my the clock hasn't started. So I'm gonna go here to alter task, uh, the task name and I'm gonna click on resume. So I'm gonna run that. And now we see that it's uh, successfully run and it's, the task still hasn't run, but we can see now that it is started. And this is the definition. So we'll give it two minutes and we'll just see if it works uh, by, by nature of just running it and having it run itself. And then we'll come back down here and check. So right now I've got four records, I think, in the staging table. I inserted only two of them during the, uh, after I created the stream. And we'll keep checking back here for seeing if our target is populated. Okay, and we'll clean things up at the end. One interesting thing to, to note uh, about, about streams, which is interesting, is when does a stream actually get committed? So you might have the staging table uh, created, but you could be creating data in your staging table many, many different ways. And so one cool thing about Snowflake is you can do things in a transaction. So if anybody has any programming background, um, like with Entity Manager in Java or something like that, you can run basically a transaction, which means you know all your code, all your updates, and maybe in your web application, uh, they'll all commit to the database uh, at the same time, unless you force the commit um, for like one statement versus putting all 10 statements into your database at one time, saving on the IO. So Snowflake has a very similar concept and they call theirs begin. And then you put whatever you want in between that and an ending commit statement. So by nature, Snowflake is basically doing like an auto commit, right? But until it actually commits, the, 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 the transaction hasn't finished and therefore the stream doesn't pick it up. So if you have like a very, very like long running um, uh, SQL statement to, to populate the table that the stream is connected to, you might not see the data come through right away, even if you run like a select statement out of the stream because the, the commit, the transaction hasn't completed on whatever SQL you, you ran. And we've seen some really crazy SQL out there that you know does like long running calculations and updates and things like that. So um, you be aware of that as you're working. Okay, let's see if this worked. Again, I have no idea if it's gonna work. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love when live demos go well. All right, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself a golf clap and the team for getting this together and actually making that work. This is super exciting. All right, and oh my goodness, and we even have the modified dates coming through. This, this is super awesome. Man, look at that, that works so well, right? So we saw the updates, we saw the task. Every two minutes, this thing's gonna just update the system with only the inserted records. As a matter of fact, let's actually try one. Like we're gonna do some ad hoc real quick and then we'll start wrapping up. So what if I did 
one insert and one update. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do an insert. Let's just mock something up, right? So we're gonna do insert, actually we'll do a couple, do five and six. We'll say this is junior. So these are just gonna be inserts, right? And then we'll say hey, whatever, we'll keep this. We'll just do like XX, XX for these, okay. So I'm gonna run these inserts. So let me do it all at the same time. So it happens kind of all at the same time. And then I'm gonna say update W customer stage. Now, some people might be saying, why would you update the staging table? So <laughs> this is all mock up and just example work here. So don't, don't hold me to that standard. So um, we'll say set, uh, we'll have to do where on the ID, won't we? And say, what we say customer name equals uh, updated. And then, you know, how about we just keep it simple? And what's a good idea? So we'll say where ID equals, and it should be numeric. I think this is numeric. In fact, I think I would make an ID, yeah, an integer, make sure it's not a string. Calls issues when there doesn't need to be any. And let's just do number two. That seems like a lucky number right now. So we're doing two minute incre increments. So I'm gonna run both these at the same time. Oh, look, perfect reason to highlight code. So I'm gonna highlight and run both of these, hopefully no whammies. All right, uh, no whammies. So we've got that going on right now. So let's give it another two minutes and see what happens. So we can check our staging table and we should, yep, we've got six records, there's the juniors. And then we can check our dimension table. We still only have two records. So now we're gonna, like, this is, I think uh, somebody asked a question earlier, like, how do we get updates or do we want to get updates or inserts? So now if we hypothesize this, we should get four records in here, not three records in theory. Well, so yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll test this out. I'm curious about the update because again, I just we just wrote this code like right before the session and it works. So we're super excited about that, but because we're using this merge. So this is interesting because if this, if this didn't have only inserts, it would definitely do the update statement. But because the stream is not getting updates, we should only get two records added here. Can we check the stream and see what's in there? Yeah. Now there's something, and I should have I should have written a line here about the stream. So um, when we check the stream, we want to make sure that we're not clearing the stream. I should have written the syntax. I actually don't have it memorized, uh, but just just as a note, it's in the documentation. So there's a way you can like do a, a pull from the stream and check the stream, and there's a way you can pull from the stream and clear the stream because you checked it. Uh, I'm trying to remember the syntax for that. Uh, so just select from the stream will clear the stream. If I remember correctly, yeah, uh, because we typically set it up like you know once you, once you go through the code and you you've mocked it up. Um, let, well, let's just test it. Let me make sure this ran, and then we'll test it. Actually, I like I like live test. So let me see if this loaded in the dimension table. Was that two minutes? There you go. Right. So yes, it did not get the update. It only captured that. So the the update never ever came into the stream. So let's see what happens if we select from the stream. And I, I thought I had that SQL there. So you know, get from the stream. And I can just say select all from in the name of the stream. No, that's the task. This is the stream inserts. And we've got nothing. But let's do this real quick. We, we said we mocked this one up. So I'm gonna create this one stage because I can you can have multiple stages or, or streams um, on a table. So now this should capture everything. Now, if I go back and run this update statement again, so let's, let's mock this up one more time. So I'm actually gonna come, I'm gonna take this one. Should have put a comment there, but that's okay. And now, this is indicating, oh, it's right there. So we'll do like this. And 
let's go ahead and just make sure these are new records. I'm even going to update a different record on the stage and just to make sure it comes through. Day three. And yep. And I'm going to say junior. I'm going to say you know, the third. <laughs> make sure it's coming through. Okay. So we're going to run this. We're going to do two, two inserts, one update, two streams. Man, how cool is this? Like we're really rolling right now. So we've got that updated. We should have two records there. It ran, so we should all you know know how this works at this point. And now I'm gonna quickly do a select from the one stream, the one that's not inserts. Because this one's not connected to a task, which is going to run every two minutes. So in theory. So now if I run this one, select all from the update stream, now I have not only um, the one I updated, the two I inserted, but I'm actually catching uh, the one that I updated, which would have been this guy, number three. So it's actually giving me um, the delete. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. So it's actually showing me the insert record and then the, the deleted record because it's an update. Yeah, let me verify that actually. Yes. Yes, okay, yeah, so that was my fault. I, I said something wrong earlier. Yeah, it's literally only insert and delete in the status. So back up here where we had this statement, this would have only been delete. So thus the benefit of you could select from this table and then get the results, but the best thing to do when you're pulling it through the feed is handle it through like a merge into statement because then you would catch the updates you could mark this update as you know only if um, the record is inserted. If it exists, then it would be an update on the target, and else you would insert the record versus updating the record. So that's why this script here is the most beneficial, in my opinion, the way to do it if you're just doing like a straightforward source to target through the stream. Okay. Yes, that makes more sense. Great question. And the clearing attribute, oh my goodness, I might have to look that one up real quick, but the clearing attribute. So if I go back down here and I run this select from, so I've only ran it once, it had four rows. If I run it again, it still has four rows. So what is the clearing statement? Yeah, I might have to search that up. But there, there is a clearing uh, syntax that will take that out. Um, the other logic to catch updates, which is what I was thinking of, was instead of running, uh, if it's a delete, there's actually a switch in the select statement. So we, we can actually run that right now. Uh, so I can go locate the select statement, and this isn't cleared. And I think we can say where metadata uh, update equals true. Yeah, so we can see, we can see it down here, right? Like this this is what I meant um, using the is update. So we would say yes, this delete is the update. This is also the update. This is not updated; it's inserted. So you could come here and you could say where metadata is update equals true. Yep, and now I get the two records. And of course, now you've got the decision. So it's pretty much like true CDC, uh, change data capture. And now you, you can take the decision to say, I'm going to make that adjustment manually or use the merge statement to do it um, based on if it's an update, right? So 
couple of different things and you can, you can be get pretty dangerous uh, with with the code, but obviously testing and everything is the most valuable thing. Yes, thank you, Ashpal. Uh, actually, and metadata update can be used for updates. Absolutely, yep. Very cool. All right, hopefully that makes sense and that's a, a little bit of a good exploration through um, working with streams. Always something new to learn there. I, I swear, every time I look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's a that's a, that's a better way to do it. So, and it all it all boils down to your use case, really. I mean, there's there's so many different ways to skin a cat, even with this, um, how you apply the the logic to the stream, using the merge into using a store procedure, all those types of things. So, uh, just getting back to the slides and, and wrapping up, I think this is a really good session. We reviewed uh, creating, well, let's do a review. So we created a stream and we created a, a staging table. Actually, we created two streams. So we got uh, we got bonus here uh, on this session. And then we discussed uh, the implications of having a stream, uh, all the different ways we could look at it. We definitely talked about inserts, uh, is updated or is update uh, actions. We saw a couple of different scenarios through the different streams, reviewed the output, saw it working basically end to end, so we observed it working successfully. And uh, yeah, so we're going to take this code that we went through just now and put it along uh, with the link of uh, this, this video. So we're recording this, obviously, and we're going to put that onto our YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. And uh, the code will be up there uh, in a few days. Um, just give us a, a, a couple days to get it out there. And you can you know, download that. If you are a GitHub user, give us a star. You know, it's all about, you know, giving us some feedback, letting us know how we're doing. Uh, you can even create an issue out there and say, hey, this is something I really want to see. Can you guys do something about this? And, um, you know, we can de get definitely look into that. And again, if you guys have some really great uh, topics or anything you're interested in, we can always pull in uh, one of the uh, engineers from Snowflake uh, directly. We might have a chance to for them to bring some swag along or something like that. Uh, but I know they're really looking for the feedback from the group in order to come on and, and do things like that. And I want to know that people are really interested in, the, in this, this meetup and the, these sessions. So the more feedback we can get from you guys, the more we can do. And we're, we're excited about that and having you guys contribute and give that feedback. So yeah, just, just wrapping it out. Definitely check out datalakehouse.io. We've got some other events coming up. I don't know what the, the next event I think is on security, security best practices maybe. Yep, and that's right. And then we've got another one uh, coming up while we're, we're gonna talk about um, using Data Lake House on Snowflake. Cool. And after that, we've got Java UDFs on the schedule. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. And uh, yeah, we will probably have um, uh, other people speaking, um, so you don't just have to hear my my voice and my my scratchy microphone, I suppose, from the session. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're excited about the next few events, and it's, it, there should be um, some good learning and some good questions, and some good things should come out of it. So thank you guys for your time. I, I do want to end, end on time uh, on this session, and we're almost at time. I think this was like one of the longest sessions because we had such yeah. great questions. I do um, want to let you guys know I put the the um, YouTube channel in the chat and I also did a discussion in our meetup group. So if you guys want to take a look at any of those videos, you can uh, find the link there. All right. Thank you, Heather. Thanks, Heather. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you on the next one. All right.